Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome to this video in which we're going to have a look at differential calculus, specifically just get introduced um, to the main idea of differential calculus. Now a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about this. I feel that uh, it's best if we just jumped into it and had a look at the main concept of differential calculus, which is the derivative of a function. Other people might not agree, other people might think it's a little too hasty, it's probably more important to look at some of the background concepts that lead into the understanding of the derivative, but that's just my style. I feel it's, it's important just to jump into it, um, get a feel for the arithmetic, the algebra that goes into it, and we can always then build up on this, this knowledge by filling in the gaps as required. So, what are we talking about? in differential calculus. Well, differential calculus is all about finding the so-called derivative of a given function. Derivative, that's an important word, and um, it's a concept that you'll see a lot of. It's derivative. Now, if f of x denotes a function, then its derivative is denoted by f prime of x, or f dash of x. This is called a prime or a dash. And the first thing to realize about the derivative of any given function is that the derivative itself is a function. And it's a function called the rate function or the gradient function. Rate or gradient function. Which means for any given input of x, what this derivative function gives me is the rate of change of my original function or the gradient of the curve of my original function at the specific point that I would, I would plug in. How do we find the derivative? Well, that depends on the function given. Depending on the form of the function, there's a different formula. What I'd like to do in this video is look at the most common method, the most common formula for finding the derivative, and that's called the pound rule. Because a large number of functions that uh, we're going to be deal dealing with can be expressed as powers, this is probably the single most important rule that you come across in differential calculus. The power rule says that if the original function looks like this, it's in the form x raised to n, then the derivative of this function, f prime of x, is given by n x raised to the power of n minus 1, which means what we do is we pull down the existing power and make it a, a factor, and then we reduce the existing power by 1. So let's do a few quick examples to see how this really works, right? Let's say the function that we're looking at is x raised to 4, and we want to find its derivative. Well, its derivative f prime of x, according to the power rule, would be 4, x to the power of 4 minus 1, which is 4x cubed, and that's it. Let's look at another example, where f of x is equal to 1 over x cubed. And this is slightly different. Easy, but different. As this function stands at the moment, I cannot apply the power rule because the power rule is only defined when I have a single power of x and nothing else. So my first task that I have at hand is to convert this function so that it is in the form of a single power of x. And I can do that by expressing this as x raised to negative 3. You will recall from exponentials that when I pull um, a power from the denominator up, I just need to flip the sign of the exponent. Now I can apply the power rule of this. So f prime of x, the derivative of this function, is negative 3 x raised to negative 3 minus 1. Pull down the existing power and then reduce the existing power by 1, which will give me negative 3 x raised to negative 4. Let's do a few more examples. Let's say we're looking at um, 
a function that is slightly let's call it g of x this time and let's say g of x is equal to the cube root of x squared again in this form i cannot apply the power rule just yet i first need to convert it and reduce it to a single power of x before i can apply the power rule. and again i can do that by recalling the concepts of exponentials in which a root can be expressed as an exponent as a fractional exponent so this will be the same as having x raised to 2 over 3. Notice how the cube root has now become the denominator of the exponent. But this is good. This is what I want, because now that I have expressed this function as a single power of x, so g prime of x, again, according to the power rule, the derivative of g will be the existing power 2 over 3 pulled down and made into a factor, and then x raised to 2 over 3 minus 1. 2 over 3 minus 1 is the same as having x raised to negative a third. And I can leave it here, or I can simplify. If I want to simplify, I can first get rid of the negative power by saying this is the same as having 2 over 3 x raised to a third, and then converting power third into a root. So this is 2 raised to 3 times the cubic root of x. The little 3 indicates the cubic root, which is what I got from this fractional exponent. I could have done the same thing here. I could have just left it at that. Or if someone wanted to be really picky and ask me to simplify it, I could have said, well, all right, this is the same as having negative 3 x raised to 4. I get rid of the negative power by pushing it in the denominator, which flips the sign. That's all right as well. All right, let's have a look at one more example, one more. But before that, I need to clear my screen, so just give me a second while I do that. All right, so let's do one final example. Um, let's say we have, again, let's go with, well, let's say h of x, just to use different letters. h of x is 1 over the square root of x cubed, let's just say. And I'm interested in finding the derivative h prime of x. I'll just write the power rule one more time so that you know what I'm talking about. If a function is expressed in the form f of x is equal to x raised to n, its derivative f prime of x is given by n x to the power n minus 1, which means pull down the existing power and then reduce the power by 1. The existing power becomes a factor. Now look at this function again. As it stands, I cannot just apply the power rule. I first need to express this whole thing as 1 power of x. So I do that by saying, well, this is 1 over, get rid of the square root by saying this. This is the same as x raised to 3 over 2. And, um, well, in that case, in that case, I can write this as x raised to negative 3 over 2, because again, when I move something from the denominator up, I get a negative power. Now I've expressed my function as a single power of x, so I can now go ahead and apply the power rule on it, so that's h prime of x, according to the power rule, that is the existing power pulled down, and then x raised to negative 3 over 2 minus 1, which is negative 3 over 2, x raised to negative 5 over 2. I can leave it like that, or I can simplify it by getting rid of the negative powers and stuff. I have, firstly, let's just get rid of the negative power of this. Negative 3 over 2, x raised to 5 over 2. Get rid of the negative by pushing this in the denominator. And finally, take care of the fractional exponent by converting it into a root, which means this is going to be negative 3 over 2, the square root of x raised to 5. This is the derivative of that function of there.
1 over the square root of h cube. So this is a very quick, very short introduction into the main concept of differential calculus, which is the derivative. I'm of the firm opinion that people should get comfortable with the mechanics, the algebra of finding the derivative. And once one is comfortable with that, we can sort of delve into the actual interpretation of the derivative and uh, the various applications of the derivative. For now, if you're interested in the interpretation of the derivative, remember the derivative is what we call a rate function or a gradient function. Finding the derivative for any given function gives you the rate of change of that original function and graphically that means it gives you the gradient of the curve at any given point. More about the uh, interpretation and application of the applications of the derivative in following videos.